Okay, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to go without slides, at least for a while, when we get the AV fixed. So please bear with us, stay with us. Uh, we're going to talk about HCNV plaque tests and OPNV plaque fest uh, collocation. My name is Silvia Almagia. I work for HC in the Center for Testing and Interoperability. I am a technical expert there. I'm, I'm, I am in charge of the NV uh, plaque test program. Hey there. My name is Pierre Lynch. I work for Ixia, which is part of Keysight now. Uh, more importantly for this, though, I, I'm the um, ETSI-NFV TST, the Test Working Group Chair, which is uh, responsible for testing, uh, experimentation, meaning uh, proofs of concept, and also open source collaboration. So the big deal that happened, uh, what we're going to go through is that the fact that we co-located a plug test, ETSI-NFV plug test with a plug fest from OPNV. Uh, we'll go uh, through as much as we can without visuals, give you an overview uh, and the results, uh, OPNFV activities during their plug fest, and also, more importantly, the joint activities that happened because there was co-located. And then uh, we'll explore what's coming up next. So the big deal. Uh, th this is the third Etsy NFV plug test. And it was like the fourth or the fifth OPNV plug fest. Uh, it was their Fraser release plug fest. It happened in, uh, in early June of this year. Uh, OPNV has been a participant and a supporting organization for the Etsy NV plug test since the beginning. But this was the first time that we actually brought both communities together at the same spot, which was a beautiful spot, by the way, in southern France, Etsy headquarters. I'm jealous of that. Uh, so that was a very cool part, but it, it allowed the communities to get together, get to know each other, and, and also collaborate on a bunch of things that we'll go through. Uh, apart from OPNV, though, there's a, a bunch of open source communities that already were supporting this plug test, OpenStack being one of them, as well as OSM, o, Open Source Mano, uh, Open Air Interface, Sonata, Open Baton. So we, we've got a collection and a, and a pretty wide collaboration with open source going on with NCNV. Okay, so a bit of background on the NV plug test program. This started, we started putting this together um, with, um, with HCNV in 2016. This was the main goal here is to validate and make sure that the standards this group is developing are, are fit for purpose and also to validate uh, the early implementations of, of these standards. So we started putting this together in, in 2016. Then we had our first plug test in Madrid in January 2017. And there was a kind of experimental plug test was the very beginning. The, the release too, I think, was still under development and we started testing uh, interoperability of different components when it comes to, um, to single VNF network services, okay? After this event in January 2018, so one year after, uh, we had the second NFV plug test. Uh, we were also hosting an open source MANO hack fest at the same time, same location. And in this case, we expanded the interoperability testing to start covering multi-VNF and multi-vendor network services, orchestrated by different MANO solutions on different platforms. And we also started working with experimental API uh, testing. So during this year, the HCNV group started developing um, APIs, mainly for the MANO stacks, and, and, and developing open APIs definitions for these APIs. So we started playing with that. And right after that, in May, June, uh, end of May, beginning of June uh, last year, we had this third plug test co-located with the European Review plug fest. Uh, there we started playing with automating the test sessions. Uh, main focus was multi-VNF network services. Uh, there was a lot more of API testing. So the, the number of APIs that we were able to test was, was bigger. And we started seeing a, a nice uh, bunch of cross-community activities that we'll be explaining later with this presentation. Um, so actually, for the NFV plug test program, it's not just we meet once a year or twice a year and we get together and we plug things together and test them, it's that we have a um, uh, worldwide network, let's say. HC acts as a VPN hub. We're interconnecting all the participants' labs so that any point in time uh, from anywhere participants can access to other participants' implementations and test together. They can use this to build a proof of concept. They can use the these to prepare for plug test, or they can do this to do some more testing after a plug test event. Okay, so this is up and running 
in a continuous way. We have right now um, over 45 remote sites connected, over 60 organizations. Some of them are sharing data centers and sharing deployment points. And we have around 250 people involved in these uh, remote activities. And then they send a delegation to the plug test events for the face-to-face -face testing. Uh, for the test plan development, this is an activity that started with the preparation of the first uh, plug test. Uh, it's an open and continuous process. It's never completed, let's say. What we do is we look at what HCNV is defining in terms of specs, but we also look at what plug test participants are implementing, and we work very closely as well with different open source communities, what they are doing, how they are interpreting these specs, and how they are solving some of the problems. With all this input, we try to set up uh, some uh, system under test configurations, combining different components uh, in order to uh, enable for the testing. And then we write a test plan, which is discussed, is open and discussed uh, continuously. It's implementation agnostic. It's meant to be run and be meaningful to whatever implementation of man, whatever implementation of platform, whatever VNF independently of the functionality that this VNF is providing. It's, uh, and the testing is run at the functional level. So this is continuously discussed and continuously fed back uh, to HCNV, which are taking into account feedback on the base specifications, and they are also publishing uh, these test plans as, as uh, group specifications. Okay, so this is a continuous process. When it comes to the third plug test that we had in, in end of May, June, the main focus, as I was saying, was the multi-vendor network services. The idea there is to have all the participants busy. We had around, I think, 80 or 100 people present, 40-something uh, organizations. So the idea is to have them all busy all the time. We schedule uh, test sessions, one session at a time for each mano solution. So we have 10 mano solutions. We had 10 parallel tracks. And on each of them, each of the mano solutions was testing with one platform. Uh, providing uh, NFVI and VIM capabilities, and with at least two different VNFs from different providers, trying to build a network service out of these different VNFs. Uh, the scope for these kind of sessions, which were the, the most tested, was uh, in network service, onboarding, instantiation, and termination. Those are the things that usually work. And then on top of that, we tested uh, network service updates to stop and restart VNFs in the network service. Uh, network service scaling on request of the operator. We tested as well some auto scaling, taking into account different triggers for this auto scaling. This could come from metrics uh, from the VIM and the infrastructure, this could come from metrics uh, from the VNF, or this could be on request of the VNF or element manager. And finally, we tested a lot uh, fault and performance management of the, this overall system. So the goal during this uh, testing is to test a maximum of combinations of platforms, manos, and, and VNFs. Then, in addition to this, uh, we had some optional additional testing. Um, <laughs> The, the idea here is for those that completed the test sessions quickly, or for those that wanted to test before or after the, the plug test additional capabilities, we put together some uh, test plans to test, uh, well, single VNF network services. This was for pre-testing mainly, but also on top of the multi-VNF uh, network services, they could test uh, EPA enhanced platform awareness um, aspects. They could uh, test multi-site deploying these network services across different uh, sites. They, we had some testing defined to test um, specific VNF management. This is when the VNF comes with its own VNF manager and this needs to interact with the MAN solution. Uh, we also had some new test cases covering scale to level uh, that are very late, uh, a little bit late in the preparation of the black test, but were included as well. Uh, we had some test descriptions for the VNF forwarding graph and the NSH um, service function chaining, Pia will talk about it a bit later. And also, as I said before, we were automating some of this testing, including more and more test cases uh, in, in the automation. Um, so I said as well, in parallel with the interoperability testing, we are running API testing, as uh, HCNV is developing these uh, SOL specifications, SOL 2, SOL 3, SOL 5 specifications and APIs. We're trying to see how we are going to test them. This is Aside from the interrupt testing for the time being, in here we put an implementation in front of a test system, and we are 
the implementation is offering the, the API server, that the system is acting as a client and testing not only the requests and responses, but also that the intended behavior after these requests are, is, uh, is met. Okay, so for the time being, this was just a subset of the available um, APIs. We try to be very pragmatic here and we check what's implemented and we will only develop uh, test cases for what's implemented that will be present at the plug test. But this base of testing is, is growing. We'll, we'll talk about it as well. Um, in terms of uh, participation, we have nine platforms providing uh, NFV infrastructure and, and virtual infrastructure, infrastructure management capabilities. Uh, I think most of them, if not all, was op were OpenStack-based or OPNFV-based. Somehow, many of them uh, through commercial distributions. In terms of MANO stacks, we had 10 different MANOs providing NFV orchestration and generic VNFM management capabilities. Uh, most of them were uh, commercial products. Uh, some of them were based in open source um, solutions. We had Sonata, which is coming from some European research projects and is now a standalone uh, open source project. And we had two distributions of open source MANO participating. So you will get the full list in the slides uh, that hopefully will be available for download sometime. <laughs> In terms of uh, virtual network functions, we had different, um, 19 different VNFs coming from different providers. And here, because the goal was to test uh, more complex network services with different VNFs inside, we tried to combine them and we came up with 27 different network services combining these VNFs. Um, there was a lot of test VNFs and simulators involved in this, uh, in this network service building. This allowed to either simulate parts of the network or to generate traffic to test the, the behavior of the, of the network services. Among the 19, uh, we only had one um, open source VNF. This was coming from the Opener interface. Uh, so we're Alliance, which are currently working in 5G network services, but for the practice they brought an EPC um, network functionality. Results. So imagine if you can, a, a <laughs> series of beautiful graphs behind me, pie charts, lines, and green and red, showing a lot of results. I'll try to describe it. The main takeaways were uh, we had less set test sessions, but the test ses individual test sessions were long, longer than previous plug tests. And we still managed to run more test cases than in pre previous plug tests. Uh, the success rate of the interop tests did go up slightly. Um, we had an increase in automated testing of 175%, so that's really taken off. There's a couple of companies that came in that could automate things like that. Uh, so that, that got really popular really quick. Uh, so that's something that we're going to try to keep, uh, keep the momentum with going forward as well. Uh, the API testing, which is not interop, so it's a little bit aside, um, that went up by 125%. So pe people are starting to participate more and more into the API testing uh, relative to the second plug test, which is uh, natural since the, the APIs weren't totally defined uh, for the last plug test in the first place. The, um, I'm going to skip quickly through this, but basically of the test cases that were tried, uh, especially focusing, uh, yeah, focusing on the entire uh, test plan, uh, the, the success rate was 89% of the attempted test cases. Having said that, 43% were not attempted. And if they're not attempted, typically is if they ran out of time or one of the participants, we have a Windows desktop. <laughs> one of the participants didn't support the necessary functionality to be able to try the test case. But it's still uh, markedly better. It, the, things, the takeaway is things are improving. Things are ramping up. At the API level, same thing, uh, 28 Hold on. Half of the test cases, what is it? 25% of the test cases were not attempted. However, um, of the ones that were attempted, there's a 70% um, success rate. Again, a market improvement since the first one. Want to give it a shot on this guy now?
Maybe not. No. Anyway, we keep going. Don't work. It's a problem with it. Yeah, it's fair enough. No problem. Um, then there was another pretty table showing per subgroup, especially for network service testing. And all I wanted to highlight there is things like onboarding, instantiation, all the basics is almost at a hundred percent success rate or almost there. So we've got the basics. They're working. Uh, we've improved over on scaling. So in the previous plug test, from what I remember, manual scaling was working okay. Now manual scaling is 100% success rate. Where I, I like the fact that it's improving is some of the auto scaling possibilities are now starting to improve as well. So for instance, on a VNF indicator, if a VNF sends an indication to the Mano stack that say, please scale, that went up to 72% success rate of those who attempted it. Good stuff. Having said that, scaling based on a KPI coming in from the Vim, meaning OpenStack, that's at zero percent. So nobody supports it right now. But improvement still. Uh, where other areas where that need improvement are things like performance management and fault management for both network services and VNFs, where the success rate vary between 57 to 72 percent for those types of tests. So again, improvement on the past one, not quite there yet. So we still have a little bit of ways to go. The API track, uh, same thing a little bit. There, there's a focus on the, uh, on the reference point between the orchestrator and, and, the, and the VNF manager. It's called Solutions 3 specification. There's a lot more test cases that were run and attempted there versus other APIs around the Mano. And that's for a few reasons. Uh, there's a lot more to test on that uh, reference point. And secondly, uh, it was the first spec from Etsy that was ready. So a lot of implementation had a head start there. Um, so, but there's other sole three parts like package management and granting, not yet. So it's an incremental process. There is where we expect to see a lot of progress for the next plug test. Okay. So. Aside from these detailed results uh, that we are compiling during these kind of events, we are also trying to gather a lot of feedback. Um, while implementers get together and talk together and sometimes they realize they are seeing things in a different way, this is probably not because they are dumb, but because the spec is not very clear. So we try to capture as much as possible of all that. Um, for this practice, we did get a lot of feedback, mostly on the sole specifications. I think it's because we've been running on top of the other specifications for a longer time, and things that need to be solved or clarified have, have been solved. Uh, but it was the first time we were putting that much focus on the sole specifications. So we got a lot of general feedback, recommendations, uh, they identified gaps and inconsistencies, and there were a number of, of requests for clarification. What was also nice during this event is that we had many of the officials from from Etsy and AV Press and they're in the room, so a number of items could be solved on the fly. And they were also getting this feeling of where are the points where they need to start uh, clarifying or adding details to, to these specifications. For the open API definitions, there was also a number of bugs, I don't remember exactly the name, but the number of bugs that were identified, some of them fixed on the stop, some of, on the spot, some of them fed back uh, to Etsy and AV, and some recommendations on how to um, improve the readability and, the, and the, the drafting of these open API definitions. So this is probably the main reason why Etsy is running these, uh, these kind of events and this kind of continuous testing, is to gather all this feedback and make sure that the quality of the standards improves and they are fit uh, for purpose. Concerning the test plans, there was a lot, also a lot of feedback. So from the interoperability test plan, this is something um, uh, we're continuously feeding back to, to, to Etsy and uh, testing working group. These, uh, there are now three new uh, or updated test descriptions that have been sent back to, to NAV TST. These cover additional testing in performance and, and fault management. This covers NSH-based service function chaining and, and, and the famous scale to level I, I mentioned before. Uh, for the API testing, all the learnings, all the experience that we gather by testing with all these different implementations is being compiled as well, and this is being input to a new work item that's called uh, TST10. This is the NFV conformance testing specification, and it's under development, but the fact that we've been playing with those APIs and testing those APIs beforehand is going to help to focus and, 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 to, and to develop a, a better spec. 
Okay, you the Open V side. So, Open V had their own plug fest. So they had their own activities going on as well. So having <coughs> it being an Open V plug fest, the focus was entirely on testing. Me. So they did a low lot. One of the, one of the big attention points that they're 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 focusing on these days is long duration testing and performance testing, and a lot of the activities surrounded that. So uh, first thing is it is two. OPNV has a series of different testing projects. Bottlenecks and yardsticks are, are two of the standards. They were focusing on doing two-day tests. They'd let, they'd let things roll for two days just to see what the results were. And the, 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 this leads to some, another project that I'll talk about later on, but one of the issues that comes out of this is repeatability of performance tests and, and uh, no errors in long-duration tests which led to a project that came to Etsy, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Another tool called NFB Bench. Uh, NFB Bench is, is a performance test tool from an OPNV that looks at the system as a, as a black box, and it uses T-Rex open source uh, traffic generator to do that. So it, it was testing against one OPNV scenario and a commercial platform from Wind River. Uh, and they were trying to compare acceleration or different networking technologies, and specifically VertIO versus AVP from Titanium Cloud, which... Um, and then they were also comparing different test tools. Um, to, uh, VS Perf is one major test tool at, at OPNV that's uh, virtual switch performance testing. It's been dedicated to do that since the very beginning of OP, OPNV. It uses four different traffic generators. And they were comparing OVS, DPDK, layer two forwarding capability between, uh, if there are any differences in performance between uh, VSPerf and NFV Bench, which has a more black box kind of look at it. And what they came out is it, 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 packet format, number of flows, packet path does impact results. So the configuration obviously will, configure, will, will impact the results. But when those configurations were matched between the two test tools, the results were pretty similar. Here is a great picture of all 150 participants that were there, and they're all waving at you, so. Next, so some of the collaboration items now that, that happened between Etsy <coughs> and OPNFV, <coughs> and being the guy trying to make that happen, this got me really excited. So one of the, the way we work at Etsy NFV is we, we call them work items, and basically you can look at them as projects. Uh, it has a PTL, we call it Rapportable. And uh, the wor each work item has a, th a name, three-letter acronym, which working group it comes from, and a number. So TST009. Uh, if you're interested in benchmarking, this is, this is the new standard in my mind. Uh, it's for NFVI network benchmarks and measurement methods. So if you're familiar with RFC 2544, this is basically an update to 2544 for virtualized platforms, taking into account that this is not a standalone box. Um, it has a benchmark definitions, test setups, even requirements over test tools that you're trying to do this, and methods of measurement. And what they did is they, they came up with new search algorithms to help uh, mitigate the, 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 the problem with repeatable results that I was mentioning earlier. Um, this became uh, the highlight of all uh, collaboration items between Etsy NFV and OPNV because it literally was an agile, iterative de development process between us at Etsy, handing it over to OPNV. They would review and come back to us with comments, but more importantly, they would prototype the algorithms and try things out, which is what open source communities are so great at. <laughs> So, and then they come back and said, mm, try this or tweak that, and the results didn't, so let's try this. So, and it was a, a 15 iteration type of thing, and it finally came out as, as a full test spec that uh, was published in January. If benchmarkings are a thing, I'm talking exclusively about that at 2.30 later on this afternoon. Um, the, in test 10, which is another work item, and that's the one that's gonna be pretty uh, linked to the API testing, is we're coming up with a, an automated complete conformance test package for the Mano stack. So it's three different reference points, a ton of APIs. Uh, these are all REST-based interfaces, and we're, we're gonna use Robot as a test framework to automate a full suite of, of conformance tests for that. 
Uh, the collaboration part is that uh, OPNF V, so far it's all initiated, but it's in the initial stages, let's say, will help us automate it as well. So if you run it against, uh, by using an OPNF V platform to lay your uh, Mano stack on it, then you'll be able to automate it fully using, using OPNF V, the Funk Test Test Tool. And then further, a future potential thing, which is really cool, is help us automate uh, instrument the platform in order to help the automation for things like fault management. It's kind of hard to automate uh, a CPU going down, while as OPNV, if they instrument their platform to say to communicate with the test system and say, okay, bring this one down, and then you check the results, that makes it a full package. So that's uh, Pierre's pie in the sky, but hopefully that'll go forward as well. Uh, it gave the opportunity, uh, OPNFV has what they call the OVP, OPNFV Verification Program, which is basically a conformance test package to, to verify an OPNFV based system uh, against uh, test criteria. The tool that executes that is called Dovetail, which is also the name of the project. Um, Dovetail is an umbrella tool kind of thing that uses existing OPNFV test frameworks like uh, mainly Funk Test and Yardstick, but there's a few others as well. And then it selects and runs test cases that those tools support against uh, a hardware and virtual, virtualized platform. Uh, it gave Dovetail the opportunity to run for the first time, I think, against commercial uh, hardware platforms uh, from Nokia, Whitestack, a Red Hat platform, and a Wind River platform. All of them, by the way, OpenStack. Uh, a very exciting and uh, new thing that happened. OPNFV has a project called XCI, uh, Cross Community Integration, which brings in from Master Branch multiple open source projects, four of them, right? Well, it was four of them. It brings in OpenStack, Open Daylight, FIDO, FD.io, FAS Data Path, and also ONAP, and brings it into a large uh, CI pipe to immediately test master branches from all those four communities. And it's been very valuable and apparently really valuable to OpenStack as well because the, the, the results are fed straight back into OpenStack and there's been a few bugs here and there which is exactly what we're all about, right? Fail fast. Uh, what, what, what XCI, because they, the project team lead for XCI was present at the PlugFest and OSM was also part of the plug test plug fest as well. Well, they got together and say, hey, why don't you get on board to this? And they finally integrated OSM, open source Mano, into the OPNV XCI. So now there's five communities, five packages being integrated into that. That led to the OPNV SFC project going, hmm. The SFC, Service Function Chaining, is a project upstream, well, OPNV project that upstreams its development into ODL to be able to support the NSH, Network Service Header uh, based Service Function Chaining. NSH is an IETF protocol from their SFC group. That project's been in existence for two, three years. But now they saw, they took a look and said, hey, wait, there, there's a, a pretty good OSM, uh, a, 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 a Mano stack there, open source, that supports SFC. Why don't we use that? So they started working together as well. And now the SFC project uses OSM to orchestrate uh, the service function chain, chain uh, tests. Uh, and then once that's in, in, they have a certain amount of tests present right now, now that that's in place, it gave them a little bit more flexibility and they're going to ex extend the test base for that as well. Okay, and yet another nice uh, cross-community activity that, uh, that happened during this event. Typically, uh, companies and participants come to practice to check what's failing in their implementation, to check what they are not doing as the others. Uh, they learn a lot, but this time we wanted to give them a chance as well to learn and show what they were doing well. So we had a challenge that was to build during the, the, the week of plug test uh, some multi-vendor, multi-project demonstrations of, of real use cases, of real network services. So we had like four or five that were set up on the spot like that and demonstrated on stage uh, with, with the full functionality. One of the nicest one was one grouping together, I think it was four open source projects, seven vendors, and they were actually orchestrating um, a 4G mobile network. Okay, so we had, um, in terms of open source, we had, of course, 
OpenStack and OPNV on the platform level. There were a couple of sites there. On the orchestration, there was open source manual. And one of the VNFs that was part of this multi-VNF network service was the, the, um, the 4G EPC from, from the Oper, Open Air in, um, interface over Alliance. So this was a really nice case of additional collaboration. Uh, you must remember that all these activities, all these cross-community things happen on top of all the testing that's running and that's been uh, compiled. So it's, it was quite a nice thing to see. So all these, all these activities, the testing, the results, the feedback, the cross-community activities, all this has been compiled in a couple of reports. You have the link on the screen, but you can also Google them. One is the plug test report. This is all the uh, plug test uh, activities, all the testing results and feedback related to the Etsy specs. The other one was a joint report between Etsy plug test and OPNV plug fest. And this is an overview, it's a shorter document, easier to read, and it's an overview of all these uh, highlights and the main cross-community activities that started there. So really nice read. And then, what's next? Once we've done this, what are we planning uh, for the future? So, in, from the Etsy side, we're really going to uh, put the focus on API testing in the next months. Uh, most of the specs are being finalized, and the open API definitions are being finalized and stable. And we feel now comfortable to run an exhaustive testing of, of those APIs. We're planning for a fully remote event. We don't need uh, participants to come to Etsy to do that testing. We're doing, going to, to leverage this hive, this hub for interoperability and validation. And what we will do is to have individual test sessions, which is each interested party implementing one of those API servers. And we'll have this uh, implementer working with uh, someone from the plug test team that will be guiding through the, through, through the, through the testing, uh, running the test system, and guiding also when things fail on what needs to be fixed on, on which side. So this is interesting for, for both parties. For the, for the HC team, is good because we will make sure that the, the um, test suites that we are developing will be, uh, will be functional and have been validated with several implementations. For the implementers, for the participants, it's interesting because they are going to get a very early check on their implementation of the API. They are going to get guidance on how to use it. And then later on, they can always go uh, download these test suites and, and run them on, on their own or incorporate them to their CICD. So this is going to run between February and March uh, 2019. Remotely, as I said, those uh, participants that already joined the plug test program in the past can simply uh, express their interest of testing and, 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 and they will schedule for the testing. Those that haven't joined yet, they can join now uh, and they can go through re registration and we are still on time to, to onboard them and have them participate into this testing. And then, after that, we are planning for a new face-to-face -face event, um, same place, same dates, will be first week of June 2019. Uh, this will happen in Etsy premises in Sofia Antipolis. We have a very big uh, room where we can fit 250 people. We have a, a nice lab nearby, and we're very close to this uh, hive uh, core, which give, a access, give us access to all the remote sites. You don't need to send your hardware there if you don't want, you can just connect your remote lab, keep the connection you have actually, and use that for the, for the testing. So here again, we will be focusing again in multi-party interoperability ses test sessions. The actual testing scope is going to be expanded. We'll have to see and discuss with, uh, with HCNV whether this is going to be to incorporate release three uh, functionality, whether it's going to be to expand uh, the scope of the interop to make some API checks during the interop sessions, or whether it will be both of them. So we'll see. Um, for the um, detailed scope of the um, API plug test here, as we were saying, we're going to be exhaustive in terms of APIs and reference points. So the participation will be, will be open actually to anyone providing a VNF or element manager offering SOL2. Uh, capabilities, any uh, VNFM offering SOL2 or SOL3, and any orchestrator offering SOL3 or SOL5. Okay, everything is under scope. Of course, in addition of all these uh, pieces of VNFs and VNF managers and orchestrators, we will need as well some platforms where we run uh, this testing. So participation is also open to hardware providers and, and Vim providers. 
Yeah. Opie and Avi has their future plans as well, so I'll just quickly go that uh, go through that. The uh, Opie and Avi just released their Gambia release, uh, the G release, so their sixth release this week. It just went out, I think, Tuesday. So that's a big deal. Now they're working on the next one, which is called Hunter, a river in Australia. I just found out this morning. Uh, they have a joint plug fest. OPNV and ONAP will have a jo joint plug fest in January, first full week of January, just outside of Paris, uh, hosted by Nokia. And it's the first time those two communities get together for a plug fest. Now, the potential, hopefully anyways, we're trying to work out if it's possible to have OPNV and ONAP join us at the plug test that Sylvia just described in the first week of, of June. Uh, so two things, uh, have OPNV co-locate their, their, their plug fest uh, and ONAP as well with us and hopefully get ONAP to participate in the plug test as one of the mano stacks. It would be half of what it does, but one of the mano stacks uh, uh, in the plug test, which I think would be really super valuable. Um, and that's it. Those are the, that, that's a potential. I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully we'll get there. Okay, and some key takeaways, a bit of uh, resume of the presentation. So the interop results, they are improving. Some areas are still not thoroughly tested, and we need to look at those and see why this is happening, whether we need to make the specs better, the test plans better, or the implementations have things still to, to develop. We've seen a great progress on automated interrupt testing, and a great progress as well, as well in NFV API adoption and, and testing, and we're going to keep uh, working on that. We are seeing an increase in cross-community collaborations, and we're very, very pleased with that. We have already uh, started Nix connecting to this uh, Hive network and, and, and making their implementation available for future testing. And we will be happy to have other communities, as Pierre was saying, joining as well, as, as many as possible. And finally, yeah, save the dates uh, for the plug test and plug fest activities for 2019. You will be most welcome. So thanks a lot for staying with us. It's been tough, I guess, for you as well without the slides, but thanks a lot for staying. The slides will be available. <laughs> Kate, wait, a, a round of applause for the poor AV guy in the back who heroically tried to fix all this. <laughs> so, thanks, <Bob. laughs>